What is going on, my super sandwiches? Ryan Style here. Today, bringing some more Dragon Ball Fighters news that stems off from what was shown off last night by Weekly Shonen. In case you missed that, Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta are finally confirmed as part of the Dragon Ball Fighters roster. On top of that, they also revealed Angel 16, which they didn't say much about 16 other than the fact that he's going to be part of the story, which we'll discuss later in this video. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the brand new mode. I'll talk about the characters uh, in a couple seconds, or I guess a couple minutes, but the brand new mode is interesting. So, as you guys know, this game is going to feature a 3v3 setup where it's going to be a tag team system where basically you pick three characters and you go out with a friend. Well, guess what? There's also going to be an extension to this mode which features six players. Yes, that's right. Six players will be able to participate in one match and they're all going to be on a team. Now, obviously, you can still stick to your 1v1 where basically you pick three characters and a friend picks three characters and you kind of control each character on your own. But if you want to go ahead and step up into, I guess, the next level of teamwork, you can grab three friends and then form your own team with them and take on other people online. And the way it's going to work is, is every time you tag out, your friends or whoever is controlling the other characters will control that character. Now granted, this could get kind of challenging because obviously if your chemistry isn't in sync yet with your friends, you might get body. But then again, you know, it's up to you guys to learn how to play like that. But I think it's a really cool freaking mode. Hey, you'll see reacts. Are you watching this video? We gotta team up. So me, you, and, and someone else. I don't know who someone else is going to be, but I feel like we gotta team up. So I, I like that mode a lot because it's it's very different. It's teamwork and it's just it requires that perfect chemistry where if you can really get in sync with your friends, it'll make you feel like you're actually there on that battlefield, and I'm super excited about that. So again, the way it works is you can either do 1v1s where you play with three characters each, not like literally 1v1 where you pick one character each, but you pick three characters and you control all three, or you can take the next level and team up with a friend and then everybody controls one character on your team and then go at it in an epic 3v3, which I think is a really cool idea. Now before I move on to the actual character news as well as the story mode stuff that was shown off in V-Jump, I do want to point out that they have zero plans to add 1v1 where you literally pick one character and your friends pick one character and they're not gonna add that mode in the reason why is because they just haven't got it right apparently or something I don't really know it's weird because Arc Systems Works has always been known for 1v1 games like Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, Persona 4 Arena but like I don't know why they just chose not to do it in this and they, they kind of want to really focus on the whole 3v3 aspect of it where you pick three characters and they can kind of tag in tag in tag out and then cycle through the characters that you choose but there's not going to be 1v1s now if that changes later i'll let you guys know but for now understand that this is going to be a purely 3v3 based fighting game when it gets released in early 2018. now the story mode let's talk about story mode real fast there's no big details here so you don't have to worry about spoilers other than the fact that unless you count android 16 being part of the story as a spoiler in which case small spoiler so apparently Android 16 is revived for whatever reason and the story is actually centered around androids and it's going to be a brand new original story. None of that Xenoverse stuff, nothing that we've seen in the past games where we play through all the original stories. This is going to be a brand new and unique story crafted specifically for Dragon Ball Fighters. Now we have no details yet of how it's going to work but apparently Android 16 comes back and it's centered around the return of androids and that, that's about it. Now I was hoping that VJ would show us more because they kind of briefly teased it in Weekly Shonen last night when they had the initial news drop. But based on the image you see, like people people are down. I don't know what it is, but people seem down. It's like a bleak situation. So for whatever reason, Android 16 comes back and he's a lot more powerful than ever before. I don't know if he gets resurrected or rebuilt or what the deal is, but he's back and apparently he's back with a vengeance. So when we get more details about that, I will uh, let you guys know. But for now, what do you guys think about an Android-based story? I'm a fan of it mostly because I loved the Future Trunks arc. The initial initial, you know, reveal of the androids back when I was a kid when we got into the Cell Saga was so freaking epic. And just seeing how powerful the androids were and how like tense the situation was had me super excited. So I'm actually I'm all for it. So what do you guys think about the a Android centered story mode? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And remember, we don't know the details yet of how anything works yet. So just kind of take it with a grain of salt, I guess. Next we have the characters. Let's start with Goku first because everybody likes to hear about Goku first. So Super Saiyan Blue Goku is going to be in the game, in case you didn't know. And yes, that scan that showed up, that red aura, was actually part of Kaioken Blue. His ultimate, or his level 3, I guess, his meteor attack, is going to be the 10 times Kaioken Kamehameha, where I think it's similar going to work to what we saw with his Super Saiyan 3 transformation in the game right now, where he basically knocks you back and then fires a Kamehameha. He knocks you into the air and then blasts you with the Kaioken Kamehameha, similar to what we saw him do against the hit in a Dragon Ball Super. Now we'll point out that the scans do say that he's a really fast character and he's going to require more labbing before you actually, you know, you can master him. So this is a more of a difficult learning curve than the other Super Saiyan Goku, which is cool. Again, remember, with a game like this, Arc System Works makes you really work for the characters that you pick up and play as. You can't just pick up someone like, you know, 
Kaioken Blue and or Super Saiyan Blue Goku, or I guess Kaioken Blue as well, because he has that as part of his moves. You can't pick up a character like Kaioken Blue and master him by the end of the afternoon. You have to really spend some time in the in the lab and figure out how to perfectly launch every single move. Because according to the scan, which by the way, if you want to see the scans for yourself, I will link the Shonen Games article in the, in the description below. So go check that out as well. But based uh, based on what the scans say, he has a lot of tools to use, and it's going to be up to you to figure out how to execute them properly. So you're going to have to go into the lab with them before you really take them online. Which is actually funny because I feel like Kaioken Blue, or I guess Super Saiyan Blue Goku, Super Saiyan Blue Goku in Xenoverse was one of the most easiest characters to use. You can pick him up and then easily start winning as soon as you go online. It's not going to be the same with this guy. <laughs> that makes me very, very happy because that's one thing I didn't like about Goku in Xenoverse 2 because he was just way too easy to pick up. In this game, you're going to have to really pick him up and play with him before you can take him online and start winning those fights. So that's actually a really good thing. I like that a lot. On top of that, it looks really nice. I mean, granted, we don't have the trailer yet, but you can see the three-piece knockback. It's going to be similar to the one with Super Saiyan 3 where he transforms and knocks you and then blasts you. The first image you see, he knocks Freezer back, he charges the Kaioken Blue and then blasts him in the air. I like that a lot and I can just imagine how beautiful the visuals are going to be when that movie is pulled off in the game. Now the next one I want to talk about is Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta and this is interesting. So his Meteor Strike or his level 3 is the final flash. But if you notice, he's actually beating his opponent into the ground. That is the exact same move he used against Rose, Goku Black Rose in the Dragon Ball Super Series. This is the one move that a lot of us were hoping to see in a game like Xenoverse but we never saw it. We saw it in Dokkan ironically but we didn't see it in anything else past that. They are actually going to have that in the game. Now, I can't tell if this is going to be a two-piece where basically he beats you into the ground and then does the final flash. I think that's probably more likely because usually for the level three attacks, they have some kind of flashy animation where it's like a blast. So I assume the way it's going to work is, is he knocks his opponent to the ground, beats him into a pulp, and then does a final flash to finish it off. And if it works the way I think it's going to work, it is going to be absolutely beautiful. So I'm a big fan of how they're doing this so far. Now, the funny thing is, is now that we have Super Saiyan Goku and Vegeta, it's like, is anyone even going to want to play with those characters? I mean, they're still really, really cool characters, but like seeing Goku and Vegeta in the blue forms in this game looks a lot more epic to me. So in the comment section below, let me ask you guys, and this is going to be a really interesting question to ask, are you guys going to be preferring to play more with the Super Saiyan versions of Goku and Vegeta or the Super Saiyan blue ones? Let me know your thoughts in that comment section below because I feel like, as weird as it sounds to say, I feel like the, the community is going to be split because the Super Saiyan transformation is iconic. Regardless of how epic and powerful blue is, the Super Saiyan transformation will always be super iconic and because of that, I feel like more people would rather play with those than the Super Saiyan blue forms, but at the same time, based on how the characters are designed for Super Saiyan blue, Goku and Vegeta in Fighters, there's a lot of reason to want to play those characters as well. So what do you guys think? Super Saiyan blue or Super Saiyan, which characters are you going to prefer to play as in Dragon Ball Fighters when it comes out in 2018? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. And finally, we have the Androids. So last night, Weekly Shonen revealed that Android 16 was going to be as part of the story. Now this is official confirmation that he's actually part of the game as well. Unlike Xenoverse, this game, when they reveal characters, everybody's playable. No shots, though. So 16 is in the game, and he's going to be more on the pure, brute, powerful strength side as opposed to the other characters like Goku and Vegeta who are more faster and powerful. So he's going to be lacking in speed, but he's going to have them made up in power, just like in the past games. Now, as far as any other details, all it really says is that his ultimate or his level 3 meteor strike is going to be the Hell Splash, where basically he beats you into the ground and then pulls off his arms and then blasts you. We saw that in many games before. Outside of that, no other real big details. Does anybody really care? Let me know your thoughts on Andrew 16 being a playable character in the game. Again, we briefly talked about it in my video last night that there are people who like 16. I was personally never a big fan of them, but again, what I like about this game is how every character is so different and unique, and because of that, I will give 16 a shot. Xenoverse didn't get him right, but I have a lot of faith in Arc System Works for making 16 right in the game, so I'm excited about it. And finally, we have 17 and 18, but it's a little bit different. It's just 18. Now, I don't know if... 17 is going to be his own standalone character just quite yet. I hope he is because he has a lot of, you know, potential to be a really awesome character in this game. But the thing that makes 18 unique is 18 fights with 17. Not only is her ultimate accelerate dance, which is, uh, you know, the attack where 17 pops out and you both beat the player into the ground, but he also seems to be popping in here and there doing a variety of attacks. I don't know how much room they're going to add where 17 pops in and fights along with 18, whether it's just going to be an ultimate or is it going to be more than just one move, but 17 is part of 18's moveset, and I really like that a lot. Now, the big question is, is how will 17 work if he gets announced? I mean, I feel like you can't have, you know, 18 as a character and not 17. Something that I think would be really, really cool is if they make 18 and 17 swap out. So, basically, it's like a dual character, similar to what we saw with the LR Andros and Dokkan Battle. If they have 18 and 17 being able to swap within each other, I think that would be really, really epic and make 17 and 18 even more of a unique character than any other character shown off in Fighters. But I feel like that's asking too much, and with that said, 
I feel like also not that many people will like it. So what would you guys think about that? Would that be cool or not? Nah? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But that's pretty much everything. Hopefully the images we see are from a potential trailer. So keep an eye open, I guess, over the next couple weeks for something that will come out from Bandai. The second I get information, visuals, or trailers, or all that stuff, I'll let you guys know and keep you guys in the loop. So make sure you stay tuned, subscribe if you're new here, and I will keep you guys updated with everything Dragon Ball Fighters related. So with that said, what do you guys think? What's the most exciting part about these skins and these characters? Feel free to discuss down below. And if you're hyped for the release of Dragon Ball Fighters as well as the news today, make sure you leave a like right below. And again, if you want to read the article and see all the scans and all this HD goodness, you can click the link in the description below. Big shout out to ShonenGames.com as always. And, and yeah, let's take it from there. I hope you guys enjoyed us today. My name is Ramstyle. I'll see you guys in the comment section below. Peace.